dot com forward slash donate. Assalamu alaikum. You're listening to Serenity streaming live on One Legacy Radio, and I'm Yasmin Mujahid. Um, I wanted to talk today uh, with everyone about uh, a topic which is very relevant to our everyday life. In fact, it's 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 something that's so relevant uh, that it's one of the uh, most important uh, obligations we have as um, believers and actually as human beings, because this issue goes back to our purpose uh, of existence, our purpose of why we were um, brought into existence, why we were created to begin with. And that, that is the, the question of um, our prayers, Salah. Now, uh, I want to sort of begin the discussion by talking about uh, how it was that we were commanded to pray. And to begin that discussion, uh, I want to talk about a journey that was taken by only one human being ever um, in all of time. And that was the journey of Al-Isra al Mi'raj. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was taken up, as we know, from, when he, first he was taken from, uh, you know, Mecca to Jerusalem and in he prayed um, in Jerusalem with the prophets and then from Jerusalem he was taken up to the heavens um, and this is um, the journey of al Isra wal Maraj uh, or the night journey it's sometimes uh, translated as and when he was taken up uh, to the heavens he got you know he got to a point where you know even even Jibreel alayhi salam could not go further and yet the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was able to go further and the reason why this is important and why i'm talking about this journey is because it was in this time it was in this journey that the commandment of salah was given and the reason why that's very important to note is that every other commandment that was given to us was given by Jibreel, where Jibreel alayhi salam came down to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam to give that commandment. And yet there was one commandment which was so important and it's, it's so, um, crucial that the, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam come up to him in order to give him that commandment. And so that alone gives us an idea how heavy and how weight, you know, how much weight this particular commandment has and should have in our lives. And that is the commandment of the five daily prayers. Now, the way that it goes is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first, uh, made the, you know, told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he, he made the commandment for salah. It was first, it was given to be 50 times a day, five zero times a day. And what happened then was the Prophet Sallallahu went down and he saw Musa Alayhi Salam and Musa Alayhi Salam who had dealt with, you know, Bani Israel and he knew and he told him, you know, from his experience that ask your Lord to reduce it because they're never going to be able to pray 50 times. They're not going to do it. And so the, the Prophet Sallallahu went up to, to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and asked, you know, permission to have it reduced because the people would be, it would be very difficult on, on us to, to do that. And then he, you know, he reduced it. He came down, told Musa alayhi salam, he asked him to reduce it again. And this, and this happened a few times until finally it was reduced to five times a day. And at this point, Musa alayhi salam said, they're still not going to do it. They're not going to do five even. And so, uh, at this point, the Prophet alayhi salam was, you know, he, he, he didn't feel that he, he wanted to go back again and reduce it more. But this, you know, the scholars basically reflect on this issue. Why is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began with 50. And there's a lot of different, uh, you know, reflections that we could make about this. Obviously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that ultimately it would be five, but he began with, with 50. So there's, you know, there's some, some wisdom, obviously, to that. So when you reflect on this, um, I think one of the, the reflections that, that, that really struck me that I heard, um, from, from some of the scholars is that if you think about a scenario, if we really were praying 50 times a day, the initial, the initial obligation, 50 times a day, would we have time to do anything else? And, and, and when you really sit and reflect on that, what you learn is that it's almost to say that this is actually what you should be doing in your life is worshiping God, that this is actually all that matters. Because if you really think about it and we really if we really did pray 50 times a day, 
we literally would do nothing else. It would just be salah. It would just be the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I think that uh, what, what the message, you know, the, 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 the deep message that, that you can get from this is that really all that matters in our life is salah. And, and everything else is just, you know, something that you fill in the space with. And what really should be our focus is salah. And if you, and really, I mean, imagine us living a life where we prayed 50 times a day. That's all we would do. And so here it's, it's, I feel that the message is, and, and, and this, what, what the scholars say is that the message here is that, uh, this is actually our focus. And this is actually what our life is about. It's about salah. It's about, um, focusing on God. It's about worshiping God. That, that in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, that the very purpose of our creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ So this statement makes very clear that there's no other purpose for our creation, for our existence, except to fulfill عُبُدَيَّةَ to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to fulfill this proper worship of, to worship our Creator, to worship our Lord. And, and if you think about it in that way, it completely turns things around. Because our life should revolve around salah. But instead what we do is we make salah revolve around our life. And so what we've actually done is we've, we've flipped it. We've made it so that, okay, I'm going to go to the mall and then I'm going to go to work and then I'm going to, you know, and then I have this appointment. And then, you know, when I have time in between, I'm going to pray. And so what we've done is our focus has completely shifted. We have it backwards. We have, yeah, I'll fit in salah where I have time, but my, my life is all these other things I'm doing and Salah fits in, if it even fits in, in, you know, in the cracks. And, and yet, subhanAllah, it's supposed to be the complete opposite, that my life is about Salah, that my focus is about how is about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that everything else that I'm doing, my appointment, my job, my school, um, you know, my shopping, whatever it is, that is supposed to be fit in the in the crack. So I have my salah and then okay, after salah then I'm going to do this or in between where our focus is completely different in that case. And and when you do that, it really um it, it really completely changes how you you go about your life and how you how you see your priorities. And that brings us to to sort of an attitude unfortunately that a lot of us fall into, which is the idea that yeah, I'll pray later. Or, um, for example, if we're involved, uh, we, you know, if we're in a class or we're in a meeting or we're at work, the idea is I don't have time for salah right now, right? I, I, I have, I'm, I mean, I'm in a meeting or I'm, I'm in a class or I'm taking a test or our, our, our focus is completely off where we say we don't have time for the purpose of our creation. And that's really what we're saying. We're saying, no, I'm, I'm busy doing these things which ultimately do not matter. And, and this is, this is something really to reflect about. Ultimately do not matter because anything that I'm doing for any purpose other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is eventually, um, wasting away, is, is limited, is something temporary. So if I'm striving, for example, um, to get a particular degree, that degree isn't going to go with me to my grave, right? If I'm striving to make money because I want, you know, a nice house, a nice car, and, and it's fine to have all of these things, but we have to realize that ultimately these things are temporary. And so what I've done when I think in this way is I'm saying that I'm going to put aside what is eternal and what is actually my purpose of life. I'm going to put that aside for the sake of what is temporary, for the sake of what is not my purpose. And, 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 and subhanAllah, this is what we do. We, we, um, we put everything else first. So if we're tired, um, we're too tired to wake up for Fajr. So what we're doing is we're putting our sleep first. We're saying, you know, we're putting that before Salah. And, 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 you know, if you think about this example, inshallah, when we get, when we return, I'll take a short break right now. And when we return, I'll talk about an example, which is, it, it's, it's a little bit comical, but I think it really brings home the point of how we have our priorities mixed up.
Assalamu alaikum. I'm Yasmin Mujahid, and you're listening to Serenity, streaming live on One Legacy Radio. Uh, we're speaking today about uh, the topic of salah, the topic of our prayers, and and this is something which is extremely relevant because it is something which is, um, you know. Right now, for example, we are fasting, uh, and you know, fasting unless we are doing extra fast, which is de- highly recommended, is something that comes once a year for a month. But salah is something which is so needs to be so consistent, and so it's really, really important to understand the importance of salah, the inner dimension of a salah, which we'll talk about, inshallah. But I wanted to give this example, and it, and it speaks to the idea that we have where where we say that. You know, we don't have time to pray when we're at work or we don't have, um, you know, time to pray because we're in class or we're studying or we're at the mall or we're watching a basketball game or whatever reason it is that we we delay our prayers uh, or we don't pray at all. And it's interesting because we, we can come up with a lot of excuses. Um, you know, we're tired. We sleep through Fajr. We can come up with a lot of excuses for why we don't have time to pray. But if I asked you this, if I said, do you have time to go to the bathroom? most people, I hope, would say, well, I have to make time to go to the bathroom because if you don't make time to go to the bathroom, the consequences of that are uh, pretty high. Um, and so you don't want to, to, you know, that's that's too high of a price to pay. So say you're in a meeting and you, you know, it's it's just, it really is not the best time to use the bathroom, but you need to use the bathroom. Guess what? You're going to use the bathroom. Um, if you're sleeping, you're sleeping and it's Fedra time. Right. And you need to use the bathroom. Most people are not going to say I'm too tired. I've just rather wet my bed. No, no one's going to say that unless they're like five. Right. And once you once you get, you know, beyond that age, you don't think that way. You say, yeah, I'm tired, but I need to go to the bathroom. Right. And and even though it is potentially an option to just lay there. Right. So the idea here is when I'm sleeping and it's fedge time and I need to use the bathroom, I'm going to get up and I'm going to use the bathroom. But I can go right back to sleep and not even pray. And so that, you know, the, the idea here is that the needs of my body, of my physical body, which is completely temporary, which is passing away every moment that we live, the needs of my physical body is a priority for me over the needs of my spiritual self, of my spiritual needs. My physical needs are more important than my spiritual needs. And, and, and here, when we think about this example, it, you know, it applies again, same, same thing. If you're in class, even if you're taking the most important test of your life, okay, and, you know, you, and you need to use the bathroom, chances are you're not going to sit there and just, you know, go to the bathroom in your seat because that's not an option for you. <laughs> the, the idea here is that you're going to say, no, I have, you know, this is a need of my body and I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, peace out. I'm going to go to the bathroom and I'm going to come back and I'm going to finish my test. Um, and yet when the time for Salah comes, we say, no, um, I'm taking a test. So the idea here is my, you know, in my mind, I have, I have put certain uh, priorities. And what I've done is I've put the priority of my physical body over my spiritual, my spiritual needs. And, and what's interesting about this too is there could be another option, right? Is, okay, I don't, I don't feel like, um, going and leaving the meeting or leaving my class or waking up in the morning to use the bathroom. So I'll just wear like, you know, um, depends or something like that. Right. So that also doesn't happen. I mean, I hope the point is it's, it's funny, but I hope the point is, 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 is getting across that we, we don't, we don't consider those things an option. I mean, nobody just says I'm too lazy to go to the bathroom or I really don't want to interrupt my class to go to the bathroom. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to wear the adult diapers. And, and so the idea here is that, um, you know, we, we really, when you make something an absolute must, when you make something a priority, there's no compromise and there is no compromise in, in using the bathroom when you need to use the bathroom. And the same thing, you know, m- more than that should apply with the obligations and the needs of our spiritual self. And the reason for that is this, my body and the physical needs that I have of my body, my body is something which is temporary. My body is actually, um, you know, we every moment 
Every moment that I live, every day that I live, my body is getting closer and closer to disappearing. And this is a fact which nobody can deny. Um, you can be an atheist, you can be an agnostic, but you cannot deny this fact that your body with every moment that you live, with every day that passes, is going closer and closer to basically annihilation. It's, it's going to pass away um, and, and, and in our graves. And so the idea is it is it, it is foolish to take care of something which is temporary and to neglect something which is eternal. And this is something we really have to to reflect about because my soul and my heart which I'm neglecting when I'm not praying. In fact, I'm allowing it to die is something which is which is eternal because this is what's going to go to the hereafter and never die. It's, that's the, that's the part that I take to forever. It's my soul and my heart. And if I'm not feeding that and I'm not take care, taking care of that, I'm neglecting what's, what's eternal for the sake of what's temporary. And this is a, so this is a really important, you know, idea that we have to really um, internalize. And, you know, one other example that you can think about is, we, we as human beings, we know that we have to eat, right? We have to eat in order to live. And, and no one, no one says, you know, I'm not, I don't need to eat today because I ate a week ago. And the reason we don't say that is we know that if we don't go, you know, if we go, I'm sorry, for, for a week without food or water, our body dies. But what we forget is if we go without praying, our soul dies. And this is really, truly the true type of death. Because again, our soul is dying, our, our body is dying anyways. But our soul, if our soul is dead, then that's what really matters. This is what we're going to take to the hereafter forever. And if that isn't taken care of, then we've lost everything. It's not, it's not a limited loss. This is an eternal and, a, and an infinite type of loss. This is so important that we really have to readjust our priorities and, and, and put Salah back where it belongs at the center of our priorities. And we have to remember that subhanAllah on the day of judgment, the very first thing that we're asked about is our salah. And the Prophet ﷺ tells us that if the first thing that you will be asked about is your salah, and if your salah is in order, everything else will be in order. And if it's not, nothing else will be will matter. The idea that our salah is what, you know, the Prophet ﷺ also says that our salah is what distinguishes us from a disbeliever. It's our salah that makes our Islam, that makes us a Muslim. And so to neglect this is to neglect, you know, that, that, that which makes you unique as a Muslim, but also ultimately at a deeper level, you're neglecting the very purpose for which you were created, which is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know, some of the things too, when you, when you get into the, the purpose of salah and the, the, you know, the benefits of salah, one of the things that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi taught his companions is that salah is a purifier. And he gave the example that uh, imagine if there was a river outside of your home and that and you bathed in that river five times a day, would there be any dirt left on you? And, you know, the companion said, no, there would be no dirt. And, and this is the idea of of Salah is that five times a day you are purifying yourself of the, you know, the, the inevitable sins that we accumulate. And by doing that, we're cleaning ourselves off. Now imagine someone who doesn't take a shower for weeks or even days. What happens to them? You know, that, that dirt builds up on them and they start to smell bad. And that's exactly what happens to our heart. If we aren't praying and we're not cleaning that heart, it's building up this dirt. And when that dirt builds on the heart, something really scary happens to that heart. The heart then becomes sick. And a sick heart is a heart that can no longer really distinguish right from wrong. A sick heart is a heart that that will see something and think it's beautiful when really it's repulsive. It will see an action, for example, an act as, as something attractive and alluring when really it's something very, very ugly. And similarly, something which it, it sees as, as ugly and something that it's repulsed from is actually a very beautiful action. And this is one of the consequences of having a heart which is sick or covered up by the, you know, the stain of sin and the, and the neglect of that heart, the neglect by being distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that, in that, um, the nearness that comes through salah. And so that heart then, you know, you, you have the sick heart and then even, even more frightening is when the heart becomes dead. And this is a heart which nothing, you know, nothing moves it. 
it is it's completely dead and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes some hearts as being more more hard more hardened than rocks because even he says even rocks can be can be you know they can be cracked and yet this type of heart cannot be cannot be opened in any way and so we we really really we have to fear you know this happening to our hearts and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our hearts and to keep our hearts you know soft and and to keep our hearts close to him and cleansed from the the the, the stains that we inevitably are accumulating throughout our lives salah is our cleansing salah is our ba- is our bath it's our it's us it's it's we're bathing in in salah when when you know when we stand in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we can take off that stain of of our sins the other aspect about salah that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about in the quran is that salah is a protection so one thing that you'll find is that when you neglect your salah when you put your salah aside or you start to sort of become lazy or lax in your salah there's something else that happens as a consequence of that and that is that you start to uh, distance yourself from Allah and then you start to commit more and more sins and the sins become not only more and more but they become more and more um, they become larger and larger sins they become worse and worse and now as the more that you neglect the salah the easier it becomes to sin and this is something that we can see experientially in our own lives and in, in the lives of the people around us that when somebody starts to go off uh you know uh, you know starts to go on the wrong track suppose somebody was on the straight path and they started to sort of get off what happens is there's something happening alongside that that you know getting off the right track and that is the neglect of salah and it will happen every time that the salah starts to that's the first step that the salah starts you know it starts by neglecting i'm sorry um delaying the prayer so then now instead of praying on time at the appointed time you you pray you know you you combine prayers at the end of the day oh when i get home i'll pray and, and then you start praying you know all of them right before you sleep or you you start then it then it becomes you just miss them all together and then it becomes you're not praying at all and and this progression is happening alongside the the the, the, the you know the the lowering of your iman and then your 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 sins are starting to increase and increase and you're getting farther and farther from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the reason why this happens is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that inna salata tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar that the prayer the salah is a protection for us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the protection that the salah it prevents shamelessness and evil deeds so if you think about the salah like a shield it's a shield which is which is our protection from shamelessness and from evil deeds so what happens when you take off that protection what happens when you're in a battlefield and you take off your armor now you're completely susceptible and this is why shaitan now has a much easier target and now your nafs is you know is 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 living large basically because you have removed the the protection of the salah and now subhanallah you are working against your own self because now allah's protection that he gave to you and he gave you as a gift from him you have thrown it away and 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 you have decided that you know there's you know you you're not in need of that protection anymore and now you're on your own and subhanallah that is the scariest thought to be on your own without the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because subhanallah you know our enemies are unseen the enemy of the self the enemy of the nafs is unseen the enemy of shaitan is unseen and if we do not have the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is no other protection and so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we stay close to the salah and we understand that the salah is why we are here why we are created it is to worship and focus our life and our heart and our devotion on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything else can fit in where it fits in everything else is secondary our purpose needs to be clear that we're here to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything else of the dunya inshallah will fall into place اقول قولي هذا واستغفر لي ولكم ان غفور رحيم